Beaker's Lab was written and recorded on Gadigal and Ngunnawal country. We honour and acknowledge Indigenous Australians as Australia's first scientists. Hey Beaker, what are we doing today? Well, this is episode one of our series on bonding, which is a part of HSC module one. For our content or our bark, we'll learn what a bond is. Then we'll support this by learning about learning or our bites. This episode will cover making stuff stick in your memory. Then for our summary and doggy bag to take home, you can figure out your own way to practice things we learned and try out some of our favorite ways to study. But before we get started, let's check in. How are you feeling? You might be feeling good, which is awesome. I'm glad that you're looking forward to jumping in with us. Or you might be feeling bad, stressed out before an assessment, worried about the content, overwhelmed with something in life, and that's totally okay too. I see you and want you to know that your feelings are valid and recognized. We have our fair share of bad days too. Or maybe you're just feeling neutral or a bit of a mix of things. In every case, we're glad you're here persisting and working hard to learn and grow. We see your effort and we're ready to jump into some chemistry together. Let's get into it. So chemistry is about what things are made of. If we know what things are made of, we can learn how they work, make more of them, or make things even better. We can find out what things are made of by breaking them into their smaller parts. Take for example this tasty drink. Thanks, Beaker. So this tasty drink is made up of ice, lemonade, and mints. And that's a good start, but I want to know a little bit more. Can I break any of these things down into any more smaller parts? Let's try the lemonade. What's the lemonade made of? Well, we can break the lemonade down again into even more parts. So our drink was made from this lemonade and the lemonade is made from lemons, water and sugar. Can we break any of these things down into any more parts? Well, if we keep breaking things down and breaking things down more and more until we can't break them down anymore, we'll end up with elements. Elements are things that can't be broken down into any other substance. For example, the water in our lemonade is made up of the elements hydrogen with the symbol H and oxygen with the symbol O. There are 118 elements. I know it's a lot. All of them are shown on our good old periodic table. I've taken this one from the Royal Society of Chemistry. You can see hydrogen on the left over here and oxygen on the right over there. Now, the periodic table might seem a little bit complicated right now, but don't worry, that's perfectly okay. We'll take a bit more time to learn about it later. Elements are the building blocks that make up everything around us. You might have heard that table salt is sodium chloride, sodium and chlorine. Sugar is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And we use some metal elements like aluminium all by themselves to make stuff like Beaker's dog tag. The smallest piece you can get of an element is called an atom. We can join atoms together to get molecules, which lets us make more complex things than atoms alone. For example, sodium and chlorine are both really dangerous on their own, but when we put them together, we make molecules of something you might eat every day. Table salt or sodium chloride. 
Molecules don't have to have two different elements though. For example, the oxygen in the air that we breathe isn't single oxygen atoms. It's oxygen molecules, each made up of two oxygen atoms joined together. But how exactly do we join atoms together to make these molecules? Well, using bonds. Atoms have a central nucleus with protons and neutrons, plus some electrons around the outside. If you don't remember much about protons and neutrons, just focus on the electrons for now. When two atoms are close together, a pair of electrons can overlap in the same space, one from each atom. In the right conditions, these overlapping electrons can make a bond, which joins the two atoms together. A bond is an overlap of electrons between two atoms. In bonds between two atoms, some pairs of atoms share electrons more equally. In other pairs, it's a bit more like a give and take, where the electrons are closer to one atom than the other. And in some pairs, it's a little bit more in the middle. But no matter what, all chemical bonds involve electrons overlapping between two atoms. Usually, chemical bonds involve the overlap of two electrons or an electron pair. Sometimes, instead of two electrons, atoms can share four or even six. The more electrons that are shared between two atoms, the stronger their bond will be. If atoms share two electrons, we call their bond a single bond and draw it using one single line. If two atoms share four electrons, we call it a double bond and draw it using double lines. Double bonds are stronger than single bonds. If atoms share six electrons, we call that a triple bond and draw a triple set of three lines. Triple bonds are stronger than double bonds and stronger than single bonds too. You might notice that each of our bonds has an even number of electrons. That's because when you're making bonds, electrons always come in pairs, kind of like me and Beaker. By learning about bonds, we can understand more about how molecules behave, like how carbon can form both shiny hard diamond and soft black graphite. And we can better understand chemical reactions, which are all about making and breaking bonds. But how do we remember all this stuff? Let's move on to the bite of this video, the study skills we can apply to practice the chemistry we just covered. So, all that stuff is cool, but how do we actually remember it? Well, according to an idea called cognitive load theory, our human brains have three types of memory. As you're watching this video, the information Beaker and I shared about bonds is probably in your working memory. This is temporary memory that keeps information the brain is currently using to understand or complete a task. You could probably repeat some of the things we said about bonds right now, but that information won't stay in your memory for very long. Where we want to get this information is in the long-term memory, where the brain stores information to recall later. If you haven't been paying 100% attention, the information we just shared might be in what's called your sensory memory. That's the stuff we notice with our different senses, like our eyes and ears but we don't really commit to memory. And that's a totally cool place to be for now, but it won't help the information we covered stick in your head just yet. To get the information to move from your working memory to your long-term memory, you first need to pay attention to it, then you need to practice it. We can practice things in a few ways. Some things we learn are more like skills, things like calculations, practical work, or playing sports. We can practice these things by just doing more of them. 
But how do we learn stuff that's harder to practice, like the definitions we learn today? One classic way of doing it is rote learning. Maybe you remember drilling your times tables over and over and over until they just stuck. The problem with this is it's hard to stay motivated and to pay attention. When you're looking for ways to practice learning to make stuff stick in your head, I'm gonna ask you to try three things. First, give yourself choice in how you practice. For example, you could try a practice exam question or you could verbally explain what a bond is to a friend or a classmate. The second thing is to make it doable. Don't make your practice too easy or too hard and be forgiving with yourself. If you're not ready to revise the whole video, for example, try starting with just one idea or topic and then building up to something more tricky. The third thing is to make your study enjoyable or important to you. Maybe you can remind yourself why you value studying chemistry in the first place, or link the ideas about bonds to something you really love in real life, like Beaker and his toy. You could also make studying a game by making flashcards or quizzing your friends. If you try these three things, you might feel more motivated to study. This comes from a theory called self-determination theory, which suggests that we're more motivated to do things when we feel autonomy, competency, and relatedness. And being able to motivate yourself is pretty great because if you're more motivated, you're able to study more, to reach your goals and do what you really wanna do. You might enjoy your learning a little bit more and hopefully you'll stress a little bit less because you'll be doing a little bit more study and you won't be feeling so bad about it. And that sounds pretty great to me. <laughs> so on that note, let's summarize what we covered and see what we have to take home with us in our doggy bag. So that's our video going through what a bond is and how we can make what we learn stick in our heads and our memories. In this video's doggy bag of resources, we've included some of Beaker and my favorite ways to study. We've linked an online game and a coloring page style summary sheet for the ideas on bonds that we covered today, as well as a brainstorming guide to help you come up with your own ways to make things stick in your head in a way that you're really motivated to do. As always, this video doesn't provide a complete review of this topic, and there are lots of other places to keep learning. Practice questions are always important to have a go at when you feel confident enough to try them, and you can always find more resources and practice from your teacher or lecturer in textbooks and class notes or elsewhere online. Always keep looking and learning. We know that you can do it. We hope this video has left you feeling a bit more confident about chemistry. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comments. Beaker and I are here to help, to listen to your frustrations and celebrate your victories in chem. We'll see you back in the lab soon. Thanks for tagging along for this episode. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and share this video with any of your friends or classmates who are studying chemistry that you think could use a hand or a poll. Click over there to watch another episode in this series and head down to the pinned comment for a link to our website where we've posted all of the resources from this episode's doggy bag.